Hello, in this video I'm taking a look at what presently is due to come out in Beaver Builder version 2.1. I say presently because it's in its alpha stage at this moment, so much could change. It is available to Beaver Builder users from their account, so you can download it and try it out for yourself and give feedback to the team. But also I wanted to let you know that I have rebooted my live demo site for alpha and beta testing and you can go to the link that will be below this video this allows you then to create a copy of this site and play around with it for a number of hours and I've included some plugins like beaver themer the ultimate add-ons for beaver builder and power pack so you can test it with those presently as I'm recording this on the 18th of March 2018 it's in alpha version 6 so perhaps it will soon go into beta Anyway, with this video, I'm largely aiming it at other community members who use Beaver Builder and like to give feedback rather than trying to provide you with an overview of all of the features that are coming out. Obviously, they are going to change, and I'm sure people are going to do videos and articles on each of those features in turn. But what I would point you to is the knowledge base because the Beaver Builder team are excellent at keeping this up to date. There's an overview document here on what is out in alpha it's a really quick thing to read and pretty easy to understand and as you'll see there are other documents for the other main features here so I'm going to quickly talk through these and then I want to just move on to some things that could be easily missed so starting with the first one this is a big relief beaver builder is working with Gutenberg so when Gutenberg arrives in WordPress version 5 well beaver builders working with it I'm sure they're going to have the work cut out because Gutenberg is constantly changing at the moment and beaver builder will have to adapt to that but it works really well and I'll quickly show that at the end of this video we've got inline editing I uh, you may have seen the blog post by Robbie which talked about how they were able to use what was in Gutenberg and with a little bit of extra code bring inline editing as a, a lightweight addition to Beaver Builder that works really eloquently but I do know there are some decisions for the team to make I sent a message to Justin Busa, the lead developer, about one of my concerns and they said they were already thinking about how they are going to set it up before they release it. So I'll try and give you an overview of what I understand at least and the issue that I had so you can perhaps uh, you know, put forward your own views on this. We've got block access to Beaver Builder by user role. So this is just a setting where you can turn off access for certain user roles and block people out of Beaver Builder altogether. We've got anonymous user data sent to Beaver Builder. So this is something you can opt in on and it's going to give the Beaver Builder team some information about your environment and PHP version. I believe they say somewhere in the documentation that initially it would be running a cron job and sending them information about once every hour, but they'll be reducing that rapidly once they get some information in the next one I don't fully understand but it's showing how beaver builder renders the title of an image I think certain image information wasn't coming through the HTML before and now it is with their new adjustments and I, I expect this is better for SEO but seriously I do not understand so you might need to check this one out for yourself and the latest thing that was released in this alpha stage is save columns I'm sure most people are familiar with saved rows and saved modules of which you can have a global version of it. Well, this is exactly the same with saved columns. You can just save your columns there. The only caveat is we have columns within columns now and you can't do the same thing with child columns, if that makes sense. OK, so that's a pretty quick overview. I'm just going to now cover some of the things that you could very easily miss, but I think are quite important. So I'm going to go over to my home page. Now, we are familiar with the naming convention for Beaver Builder being Page Builder rather than Beaver Builder. Well, they've changed this. So as you can see here, it says Beaver Builder, and that's the same also in settings it's changed from page builder to beaver builder there's also some other changes of the naming conventions of the plugin to make it more clear what's beaver thema i think now this makes 
a lot of sense on one hand. I'm quite happy that clients know that I use Beaver Builder. They're going to know that anyway when they open up the page builder and see the icon. My only doubt on this, well, a few are, is the fact that I felt the page builder was fairly descriptive on the front end for people. And of course, I've recently, just after 2.0 came out, I've made some more videos to explain it. So again, it's more videos I'll need to redo for this naming change, unless I use my agency license, where of course I can change it to what name I like. So I'm uncertain about this. I can understand the reason for doing it. I just think in this particular front end, I still prefer Page Builder because I think it describes what the client needs to do. And I don't think most of my clients are sadly that interested in Beaver Builder itself. So, and following on with this, um, I'm going to open this up. Uh, a similar thing with the new notifications which are here so you'll see this notification bell and when there's a new notification from the team there'll be a red dot so you can't miss it and i'm going to click on that now at the moment i've no idea what information the beaver builder team are going to share with us i've no problem with this it's quite nice to be able to get some information from the team here when i'm working again it's from the client perspective I don't know if they want to know this. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm keen for them to join the community and to get interested in these kind of things. So in one ways, I kind of like it. I just wonder if it might be a bit of a distraction. And of course, it doesn't matter what user capacities we give our clients at all. The, the bell's going to be there, which leads me on to the next thing I'm looking at. I'm going to go over to another site, which I've set up with the alpha version here now i've got restricted access on this i'm in as an editor with restricted access so i don't get the full page builder and as you can see there is still the notification bell over here now i wanted to talk about the inline editing i think it is great now it's one of these things that i never felt i needed so i was uncertain about having it now I'm going to open it up here and you can see this is how it works. It now allows you to just type in what you like and you can easily just bold and add sort of emphasis and links and everything can and align all of the stuff here. Now I think it's great and particularly when it comes to things like headings. So many times I've wanted to put in strong tags as you see I've been playing before. Now it's so much easier to do this while I'm working and put emphasis in. I like that. It also works with the third party plugins as well. My only issue with it is, apart from the fact that, again, I'm going to have to update clients how to use this, is how it works in this restricted view. So if you've got full access, you can easily dock your dialog box so it gets out of the way and everything moves over to the side. But as we have it at the moment, it's likely as you move through the text to just get in the way. So this can be a problem when you're on a resolution like mine, which is 13, 6, 6 pixels wide. So I believe this is the situation. They are talking about it in the team and maybe you want to get involved with your view on it. They can either turn off the inline editing when you can't dock this, which would mean that to my thinking, the people who perhaps would most like the inline editing won't get it that way. Or they could do the reverse where you only have this and don't like the editor. But of course, then that would obscure the ability to add styles, which I've already taught my clients how to be able to use this in this view. So that would be uh, not too good. Or I think Justin may be working on a way so when you park your cursor somewhere, it knows how to get out of the way. So yeah, there's some issues there. I, I'm not so sure. It's it's one of these things where I'm I'm not sure how much I ever needed this. It really seems like a a kind of whizzy thing to have, but I'm not sure if it helps personally that much. So I think my own personal preference would be that it was something that I could turn on if I needed rather than something that I'm just going to get at the moment. So that's my personal feeling on it as it stands at the moment but of course i could change my mind on that okay i think that pretty much covers all the main things that you might have missed i said i was going to look at gutenberg so i'll just go over to the back end of my other site so i think when you've installed the gutenberg plugin to try it out it adds this option for pages and posts and 
Beaver Builder will work, of course, if you've turned on posts as the way of editing. And I think this is from the Gutenberg plugin. You get the option to go the Gutenberg route or the classic editor. So I'm going to open one up in Gutenberg and when that's done you'll be able to see what beaver builder have added here so you get the option to launch the plugin and that works just as it always did and you won't even know that gutenberg's there or you can go to the standard editor which will open up gutenberg and you can start adding blocks as gutenberg works on now what happens if you convert one to the other is that any of these blocks that it understands will then get converted into beaver builder into one html module as it stands it won't separate these out into blocks at the moment and i think as well it does its best job to place these into the relevant places on a conversion back the other way but i guess it's something that many of us won't be playing with for me i'm just happy at the moment that we can still use the page builder as it is and this is just the start of this major change anyway that's me done i think on this i hope it's going to be useful to somebody i'll look forward to receiving any comments and if you like the video then please give me a like if you like these kind of videos then please subscribe to my channel and i hope to talk to you again soon bye bye